Hey, good morning. This is Jamie from Stonemeyer Games, and I'm here, as I usually am, at Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time to uh, spend an hour with you, to answer your questions, to discuss random topics, to, and to share what's going on behind the scenes here at Stonemeyer Games. Uh, where should we start today? You know, I didn't have cho I don't have chocolate of the day on my little sticky note of reminders here, so let me start with chocolate of the day so I don't forget. My chocolate of the day today Actually, it won't be chocolate. Today, for some reason, or over the last, last few days, I have been craving Pringles chips. Very specifically, I think. I haven't actually satisfied the craving yet, so I'm not exactly sure. But I'm pretty sure my craving is our Pringles. So I have acquired some Pringles. I will plan on eating them, or some of them, this afternoon, and we will see if that satisfies my craving. So what are you craving lately? Whether it's food or, or uh, anything else in your life, anything else that meets your needs or desires, what are you craving right now? Let me know in the comments below. Good morning, Navia. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, okay, uh, one of the, the newest things I wanted to mention is that just a few hours ago, we went live with a Viticulture World wine bottle label, label maker. It's just a virtual thing. It isn't something that you can actually, well, you probably could print it out. But uh, if you go to the Viticulture World page on the Stonemaier Games website, I'll post a link in the comments below so you can see it. Uh, there's now a big button in addition to the launch sign up request form. There's now a big button there where you can go and answer a few kind of personality quiz style questions to create your own custom wine label that you can then, I don't know, you can you can share it and basically. You can share it, you can have it, you can just see it, you can use it when you play your first game of Viticulture World if you want, even though it isn't a game about making wine labels. It's just a thematic little thing that Ryan and Vitaly and Dave put together behind the scenes for you to enjoy. So feel free to check that out. In fact, you can even, if you're watching right now and you want to post it in the comments below, you can answer a few questions. It doesn't take long, it doesn't take much of your attention, and you can post the resulting image in the comments below if you'd like. I see Fernando, George, the Excel gamer, Carol. Uh, Carol says he literally ate some Pringles five minutes ago and he hasn't hadn't eaten them in months. Maybe we share the same craving there, Carol. Um, did it satisfy your craving? Were you craving them? Or was it just a coincidence that you had them accessible to you? Tony, Dan, Kevin, good morning. Kevin says that he is craving his family vacation that starts tomorrow. Today is going to be dragging. Yeah, I can, I can definitely see that. Good morning, Molly. Yeah, today I asked everyone uh, right off the bat, what are you craving today? Whether it's food, whether it's a, a trip like Kevin is excited about, uh, whether a book, a movie. You know, I'm craving also a little bit. I'm craving the new Obi-Wan show and the new Stranger Things show or, or season, which come out on the same day. I wish Obi-Wan came out today um, and Stranger Things season four on Friday, but now they're, they're overlapping a little bit. We'll have to make a choice on Friday evening as to which one we choose. Um, and tonight, although I won't watch it till tomorrow, tonight I'm really excited about the season finale for Survivor. Very, very excited to watch that. Um, I mentioned a second ago that we have the Viticulture Wine Label Maker on our website. There's a kind of a personality quiz, a very short personality quiz that you can answer on the Viticulture World page of our website to create your own wine label. And that is somewhat of a little reminder that Viticulture World will almost definitely go live for pre-order on Wednesday. I'm excited to finally share this with you for pre-order. We've been waiting for all the different parts and components to arrive at the four different fulfillment centers that we use, but uh, everything currently is looking on track for that to happen. I think there's one last thing that we need to arrive in Canada, but everything else has arrived, and I'm pretty sure, well, we won't launch unless the thing actually has arrived in Canada, but I think we're, we're good to go for our pre-order launch for next Wednesday. And when we do a pre-order, pre -order, it means that we already have everything. So we're gonna start shipping it right away to champions and then a few weeks later to non-champions. So people, you, will start to get this in early June if you pre-order next Wednesday. We did make plenty of copies of Viticulture World and the Wine Crate. So if your finances don't work for you to pre-order right now, you can wait till later. I can't guarantee that the Wine Crate in particular will still be in stock. Uh, after a few days or a week, um, but uh, we made a decent number and we can always make more of it if, it if it's that popular enough that we need to make more. I'm gonna scroll back and look at questions real quick. Reed, uh, Renee says that they're craving the pre-order for Viticulture World. Nice, I am too. Chad says it's his wife and his 14 year anniversary today. Congratulations on your 14 years with your wife, Chad. That's wonderful. He says, part of our day, we'll be putting together a Duck Duck Goose puzzle. Nice, the thousand piece puzzle that we made recently. Yeah, I'm curious, has anyone gotten through the 1500 piece puzzle yet? I've seen lots of photos of the 500 piece puzzle um, and some photos of the, th of the thousand piece puzzle, but I haven't seen any of the completed 1500 piece puzzle. I'm curious if anyone has finished that one yet. 
The Excel Gamers, uh, Chad's also craving Obi-Wan. The Excel Gamer says that they're craving to play some more board games. Their office is a mess because they built a new computer. Also getting ready to record my pilot, the pilot for their podcast. That's awesome. Yeah, I hope the pilot goes well. I got to play uh, On Mars for the first time last night. And I also played Arc Nova two times since the last time I saw you here. I won both times, had a great time playing both of those games. I'm kind of on a winning streak now in Arc Nova. And Megan was very kind to play Radlands for the first time with me over the weekend. I've been wanting to try Radlands. And my friend Alex at the Dukes of Dice let me borrow his copy. And Megan was very kind enough to let me play. And I really enjoyed it. So I did a video on that that will come out, I think, in a few weeks. I need to do a video on, on On Mars, which I just played yesterday. What do you all think about those games? Ark Nova, Radlands, and On Mars, if you've played any of those games. Justin says, good morning. He's craving some really good Iskender kebab, very specific for lunch. He says it's like a, a gyro, but instead of in a sandwich, it's over chunks of bread with sauce and yogurt. That sounds delicious, Justin. We have a, a good gyro place right near us. And I haven't been in a while, so I, 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 you're making me kind of crave that too. I might need to satisfy that craving in the near future. George says he's craving some mornings in Tuscany, waking up next to some real vine fields. That sounds wonderful, George. Uh, Corlin says, have I played Foundations of Rome? It's really good. I have not played it. I saw it, I believe, at the table on the table at Geekway to the West, but I haven't played it yet. I don't think I know anyone who owns it, but um, I will have to try to get that to the table soon if I can find someone who, who has it in the area. Justin says that he's celebrating his 14th anniversary as well. Two 14 year anniversaries today. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, let's see, Scott says, uh, the 1500 piece puzzle would have been done in a heartbeat if it was available during the COVID lockdown. Now the kiddos are so busy and my wife isn't ready for another puzzle. Yeah, we're like two years too late for puzzles, but we still thought it would be fun to do. And uh, I certainly hope there isn't another lockdown to create a lot of time for people to make puzzles, but hopefully people are still going to have fun with the puzzles when they want to spend time with them. I think summer vacations are kind of good for them. Like if you go on a family reunion and you just have it on the table the whole time at the reunion for for people to, to work on in their free time or to use as a conversation piece, um, I think that'll be fun to see if people do that during the summer. Dominic says, how did you like On Mars? My copy with Alien Invasion is coming in today. That's a nice coincidence. This is my first time playing On Mars. It is definitely... Uh, a lot heavier of a game than I usually play and not like the the decision space uh, there's, there's plenty of decisions to make but um, the amount of iconology was uh, really quite overwhelming so it's tough to judge it on my first play because there was just a lot and a lot of the icons looked very similar in color and tone and shape and so it was just like looking at the board it was it was um, it was hard to fully understand all my options I didn't even try to do the upgrade Thing, or the tech track because the technology I, I just I, it was too much for me to get that however I did have fun with the elements of the game that I understood like going back and forth between orbit and the planet that's a key decision point in the game like do you stay on one side of the board to basically gather resource gather resources or do you move over to the other side of the board um, and uh, and spend those resources on various things and then go back and forth the decision of when to go back and forth I liked the idea the concept of kind of pushing how long you could stay in one area with what you had gathered so that you don't have to spend time going back and forth at the same time it is actually good to go back and forth because you gather some stuff on the way that is a really cool thematic twist to the game that I really did enjoy yeah I did enjoy hopefully I said that clearly I did enjoy that part Carlos says, in the past, you've mentioned your struggles to design a deck building game. However, some of your latest design notes and 10 things I learned from videos have been for deck building games. Does that mean that you might have found an initial design that you're developing? Um, deck, deck building is still something that I want to work with someday, Carlos. That is something that, that uh, it's a, I think it's a really cool mechanism that um, still has design space open to it, as we've seen in the last few years with games like Dune Imperium and Lost Ruins of Arnak that use it as part of the game, but not as the sole focus of the game. So it is still definitely fascinating to me. It's still on my mind all the time. I'm still just interested in it. And that's why I think it's on my mind for, for videos. So several of which you've seen recently, I even have an upcoming video about um, the 10 things that I've learned from, which one did I did? Which one did I do? I did Clank recently. Um, I have a, or, and I had Dune Imperium coming up. Yeah, Dune Imperium is coming up soon. Or I've switched those two and I've already done one of them. What was my video this past weekend? I did a video on, oh yeah, my top eight favorite games that I played at Geekway to the West, kind of ranking how likely I am to play them again. Um, I also did a blog on Monday about the top five mistakes 
that crowd funders make. I think I did top five, either that or top four. Let's see what I actually did. Top five. Yeah, top five mistakes that may sink your crowdfunding project. And on uh, Thursday, there was a post that uh, seemed to really interest people based on the number of views called An Insider's Perspective on Game Found versus Kickstarter. I never had a guest post before from someone who has used both platforms. And um, uh, we, we had someone come on and, and share uh, his experiences with it. Uh, the, uh, the Sammy from Lands of Galzir, the, the, game, the game Lands of Cal Galzir that was on Game Found. So that was a really interesting interview uh, for me to learn from and to share with others and see what people said about it. Molly says that she played Ark Nova. She's played Ark Nova twice and loved both plays. Collecting bears won me the game. Bears, I think we had someone in our game who was going after bears. I went after water in the last game, just a lot of stuff that needed water. And in the previous game, what did I go after? I kind of had a hodgepodge strategy where I went after a couple different things. Herbivores were one of my main focus, but um, it's, it's really, I love order of operations in games where you're deciding between doing one thing now or doing it later and how it can impact your decision tree in this in the game. And Ark Nova is full of order of operations. Do I do this now? Do I do this later? Or I need to do this and this before I can do this? I love that type of decision in, in tabletop games. Justin says that he loves On Mars. Ark Nova is still on his two-play pile, and he hasn't played Radlands yet. Jason says Ark Nova is fun, but a lot to learn at first. The rulebook is a slog the first time. Yeah, I didn't learn from the rulebook, but I have taught it several times since then. And I kind of have it. I think I have a pretty good teaching method down at this point. Um, I focus mostly on the action cards, and I don't try to teach stuff that you don't need to know in the first few turns of the game. But you're right, it is a lot to grok early on as you're getting to know the, the game, even if you're being taught by somebody else. Uh, Jonathan says that yesterday he played Euphoria, one of our games. He says, it's a big game. Excellent. I need to play more. I'm glad you had fun with it. That's so great to hear. Uh, yeah, that, that's Euphoria, Euphoria is another one that's a little tough to teach um, because there's stuff scattered all over the board that kind of looks similar and some of it is similar, but some of it's different. And to fully understand one thing, you have to teach two other things. Uh, it's a lot to teach. So I appreciate you diving into it, Jonathan, and learning it, maybe even teaching it. And uh, I, I hope you have fun with repeated plays of it. Let's see. Justin says, is the Euro place near you Turkish or Greek, if you don't mind me asking? I believe it's actually Palestinian. Um, I may not even be using the right word, Euro, but I, I, believe, I, be, I believe they serve Euros. Yeah. Ryan says he recently got a copy of Ark Nova and played with his wife a couple times for the first time. We loved it, but it was very long. Does the time to play drop much with experience? Uh, if you're just playing with your wife, one other person, whoever that person is, I think the time should, you should be able to get it down to about an hour and a half eventually. I have played a four game, a four player game with people who all knew what they were doing and we got it done in two hours. We kind of had two hours to play it and so we decided just to make it happen in two hours. And I also played a game with uh, this past weekend that took around three hours with everyone knowing what they were going to do, but it was a more leisurely game anyway. So I think with lower player counts, it is possible to play in under two hours. And even with four, it is possible to play with four. But you have to be committed to really thinking ahead about your turn so that when it comes to your turn, you are ready to take that, that turn. Yeah, that's my experience at least. I'll come back to questions and comments in a second. Oh yeah, speaking of anniversaries, people are talking about anniversaries. Red Rising's one year anniversary is coming up on the 28th. What day is that? Is that that's Saturday? That is Saturday. So Red Rising this weekend. Get it, get it to the table if you want. Um, if, if you're in the mood to, to or if you're trying to choose a game this weekend, Red Rising anniversary, get it to the table, share photos in the Red Rising Facebook group or on Instagram. I'd love to hear what your final hands look like. And I'm going to try to play this weekend too and share my hand. We'll see how my final hand of cards compares to your final hand. It's, it, it's such a wild ride with Red Rising. It feels like I, I've been working on that game forever. Um, it feels like it's been out for a lot longer than a year. But yeah, it's just a year. It came out in retail one year ago as of this weekend. Any other anniversaries? Uh, I don't see any anniversaries in my comments here, but let me know in your comments if you have any other anniversaries coming up for anything that you like to celebrate. Uh, let's see. George says, have I ever played the game Cuba? It's a bit of an older game out of print, but I think he, but he quite enjoyed it this past weekend. I don't think I have. I've played Mafia de Cuba or de, de Cuba, something like that, uh, that plays in like a cigar box. I don't think I've actually played Cuba. I'd have to look it up, but I, I don't think I have played that. No, I'll have to check it out. What did you enjoy most about it, George? 
Uh, Dan says, have you checked out the ARCs Kickstarter from Leader Games? I know you love sci-fi, and this looks like a great medium-weight campaign game. Um, I did check it out. Uh, I, I'm not a backer of it, uh, but I'm excited to see it, do, see it doing so well for Leader Games. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I don't know if it's a, a great fit for me, although I, I did do a video of it recently that I think will air this weekend about trick-taking games and modern twists on trick-taking games. So I am fascinated by designers using trick-taking in different ways. Um, and I appreciate, Dan, you thinking of me with my love of sci-fi. I do love that. I would say right now I'm not really looking for another campaign game because I've backed so many campaign games and have a bunch of them coming. So I think my campaign experiences are covered for the next like year, year and a half. Um, so I would say standalone games, single play games, which I know ARCs is also. Um, but I read a review that that uh, on Space Biff that wasn't really all that high on the individual play of the of a single session. And um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to deter, deter from anyone's excitement. I think it's uh, the game looks great. I know Cole has a great following and um, Leader Games makes great games. So for anyone who's excited about that, I uh, I'm excited for you. Yeah, but I'm not going to be a backer of it. Yeah. Ivan says, what do I think about Living Forest? It has deck building, tile placement, and resource gathering with three different win conditions. This was on my honorable mentions to play at Geekway, but I didn't actually get to play Living Forest. Um, so I don't know. I haven't played it yet. I'm, I, I'm curious about it, but I have not tried it yet, Ivan. Uh, do, you, do you like it? It sounds like you do enjoy it, or you're just asking about it. Curious to hear your thoughts if you have played it. George says, will there be a book club this week? There won't be. Thank you for asking about that, George. Uh, I'll generally announce book club on Sunday, and I think I'm in an every other week pattern right now. So the next book club will be most likely next Thursday. I should probably add that to my calendar so I don't forget it. But uh, yeah, I think we're looking at next Thursday for the next book club. Let me make sure that actually is clear. Yeah, yeah, we're good for book club next Thursday, probably at 2 o'clock. Um, and... Uh, yeah, we did the book, chapter two of the book club last Thursday. And for those of you who don't know, book club is when I look back at a chapter in my book, A Crowdfunding Strategy Guide, and um, kind of bring it up to date in real time, live in a discussion with you uh, about you know modern examples, if the strategies and methods and ideas that I mentioned in the book back eight years ago when I wrote it still apply today or if they don't apply today. Um, and yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's just 30 minutes. Uh, you don't even have to have read the book. And I put it on YouTube afterwards. So if, if you're interested in following up on that and see what it's like, you can check out my YouTube channel to see what uh, chapter one and chapter two looked like. And I think it'll continue to evolve. I definitely want it to be a conversation, a discussion, not just me spitting information at the, um, at the screen, because I have just as much to learn from you as, as I think you do from me. But I am enjoying it so far. Thanks for asking about that, George. Jerry says he saw in my Instagram post for Boone Lake that Alexander, Alexander Fister is open to collaborating with you. You've worked with Paolo Mori for Libertalia. Any other designers you're working, you are working with or would like to work with? My dream pair up would be you and Vital Certa. I appreciate that, Jerry. Um, there are a few designers that, that I highly, highly respect, but whose games don't click with the way my mind works. And... Unfortunately, Vital is one of them. I really, really admire his designs. I mentioned I played Art on Mars just last night, but I've never had a game. I've never played a Vitalis sort of game and thought I really want to play this again right now. It is not an insult at all to his game designs. Uh, I really, really do admire them. I admire how well he integrates theme and mechanisms, but I don't think that would be a good pairing in the end. Um, as for Alexander Fister, though, a lot of his games do resonate with me. And I Love Sky is one of my favorite games of all time. And I reached out to him years ago and said, you know, I really admire your work. I really, I really love what you, what you think about, how you have the flow of your game designs, the decisions you make, and I would love to publish a game with you someday. So I, I hope that's a possibility for Alexander Pfister. I would gladly do that for Uwe Rosenberg. Um, I don't know, I can't even start making the list because there are so many amazing game designers. I'm not going to mention any spoilers, but I am working with some very talented, amazing game designers right now on some projects that uh, that will come out over the next few years that I'm really excited about. Several of which are, are newer designers. They aren't designers that you would have heard of yet. Um, yeah, and one, a, a couple of them are, are not. A couple of them are, are a little bit more experienced, more famous designers as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see what, what comes of of the future with those those game designs. Um, there are many, I, I need to like, I, I intentionally cut myself off there because there's seriously so many amazing designers whose designs that I love. Um, 
that uh, that I could go on forever, and I don't want to accidentally leave someone off that list. Yeah. Hey, Susanna chimed in. Susanna has been working on a guest post that will appear on the Stillmire Games blog in the near future. And she says, Red Rising is such a great game. Congrats to you and Alex on the anniversary. Yeah, it was wonderful to work with Alex on Red Rising. Alex is my, now my co-worker. We worked on it before we were co-workers. And uh, I'm very lucky that Alex came on board and helped me figure that game out. Because I, I was not able to figure that one out on my, on my own. Steven says he's hosting a game, going away party for a member of his game group on Saturday. I think the plan is to play Scythe. I'm sorry to hear that you're losing someone in your, in your game group, Steven, but um, I hope you all have fun playing Scythe at your final game night with that person. What else is going on? What have I backed recently? I backed uh, Bark Nova. Uh, not, not Bark Nova. <laughs> there should be a game called Bark Nova now. I'm back, back to Bark Avenue uh, on Kickstarter recently. And I talked about the Meeple Source campaign last week, but I'm trying to think if I actually did back it or not. If I didn't, I need to. The, uh, the Kickstarter campaign for the Bird Meeples is live right now for, um, for Meeple Source. So let's check out how that's doing. I did back it. Good. I meant to back it. Uh, it looks like I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one's doing really, really well. I'm glad to hear it, to see that it's doing so well for uh, for Meeple Source. Nicholas says that Geekway just sent out their survey. Did you, do you have anything publicly you would like to say that they did extremely well? Uh, I mean, I I think Geekway does a such a fantastic job across the board, Nicholas. I know you're lo probably looking for things that you want to emulate in your events. Uh, I, I love the, the vaccination mandate. I like that they had an area for masks and an area for people who didn't want to wear masks the whole time. I respect both. Um, I was definitely in the fully masked area. I, uh, what else? Um, I like the little, uh, the meeple, the big meeples that, with the flags that can let you know if you're looking for a teacher or a player. Um, I like, I, I, I don't know, what else? What else specifically did I really like about it? Um, I like, the, I like that they have play and win. I mean, Geekway is one of the originators of the play and win system. I really love that they have the play and win. Uh, there, there's very little that, uh, I mean, there's very little, I was going to say there's very little that I didn't like about it, but really the, every experience that I had at Geekway was, was really, really wonderful. So um, those are the specific things that come to mind off the top of my head, Nicholas, that I, that I really appreciated. Yeah. Scott says that he's playing Wingspan and Tapestry this weekend. And if you want, you could add Red Rising to that list because it is Red Rising's one-year anniversary this weekend. Quint says there is a TikToker who does old obscure games. What would you say is your favorite old obscure game? I don't know if it's particularly obscure, but two of the oldest games in my collection, we talked about oldest games actually last week on this, uh, two, of the, two of the oldest games in my collection are um, Scotland Yard and Stratego and Blockus. Those three. Those are the three oldest ones. But I wouldn't say any of them are particularly obscure. I don't know if I really have obscure older games in my collection. I'm looking over here. I don't really see any really obscure games in the collection. Barry says that he's really been enjoying Dice Miner, a fun light dice game with lots of tricky decisions. I love Dice Miner, Barry. I'm glad you're having fun with that. I was just actually looking at that on my shelf over there. That is a wonderful like 30 minute uh, dice chucking game with beautiful custom dice. One of my, one of my favorite games from the year that it came out, last year, maybe the year before? I think it was uh, last year. Cameron says, I heard whisperings of a surprise today. Anything I missed? I don't think I had any surprises today to reveal. No, I don't... No, not today. Uh, we had a few surprises in our early May newsletter, Cameron, but I don't think I had... It. Uh, if you have a, a hint at what it might be, if I mentioned something that I'd forgotten, feel free to let me know. Um... But yeah, I can't really think of any. I guess the, the little surprise is that we have a way on the Viticulture World page of our website that you can create a custom wine label for Viticulture right now if you're interested in that. I was on a podcast with Shopify. Shopify has their own podcast, and uh, they invited me to join them last week, and so I had a nice conversation with Shopify last Thursday. I don't know when that will go live. But that was one little thing that I recorded recently. And had a good game of disc golf this past weekend. We also watched two pretty good comedies this past weekend called The Valet and Senior Year. And been doing some playtesting for a game recently that's actually just off camera over here uh, on the table because I'm going to do a playtest later this afternoon of this game as well that I've been working on. 
And shows we've been watching, Stations 11, we gave that a try. Ended up not being for us, but I appreciate what they did with the show. We're loving Girls 5 Eva Season 2. If you're looking for a great lunchtime comedy and you like uh, 30 Rock, it's very much in the style of 30 Rock. And Kimmy Schmidt, very, very similar style. I think they have similar writers. And we're trying out the new Star Trek show. I don't watch many Star Trek shows, but I heard great things about the new Star Trek the show called Strange New Worlds, I think. And we watched the first episode and really enjoyed it. So I'm looking forward to watching more Star Trek. Uh, yeah, I think those are those are all the things on my list today. No, 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 no surprises that I can think of, Cameron. But feel free to let me know if I'm forgetting if I hinted at something and I'm not, and, and am now forgetting it. George shared a photo of Cuba. No, I definitely have not played that game, George. I have not. Andrew says he's going to print up some copies of the wine label he created earlier today to adorn his copy of the wine crate when it arrives. I like that. Yeah, pair it with the wine crate. That's great. Dominic says, have I checked out the Castles of Burgundy Game Found campaign? I have. It looks great. Um, that's one that I haven't backed yet. I probably will, but I was kind of waiting to see if a friend is going to back it first. I feel like I... I I have so many games right now that I know are incoming. I'm kind of at that almost a little bit of a saturation point. So I have to really, really want the game um, to get it. But uh, but it does look really cool. I, I like what they did what they did with it. I mean, it looks beautiful. Um, this refresh of Castles of, Castles of Burgundy that they they put out. So I I will probably back it if I don't see if a friend backed it, which is kind of a clever thing for GameFound. I, I consider the one great weakness of GameFound to be that they don't have a system where you can see if your friends have backed it. But at the same time, because I don't know if my friends have backed it, maybe I'm more likely to back it because I don't know if a friend is already going to have it. So that's an interesting catch-22 of Castles and Burgundy. I will probably end up backing it at some point. Abigail says that she saw my post about Lands of Galzir last Thursday. She's excited about that game as well. Yeah, that is one that I did back. That's one of those campaign games that I'm excited to receive, but am also at a little bit of a saturation point for campaign games um, as a result. So I'm excited to get that one. I think that one should be shipping in a few months, maybe. I'm very excited to try it. Uh, Steve says, oh, he has, uh, let's see, he managed to beat Tall Automa the other day for Red Rising. He says, it doesn't happen often, and I still only manage 246 points. I also often play Viticulture Tuscany Edition solo, but I've only won once. Have you made a video regarding strategies for Viticulture that might help me play better? Steve, that's a great question. I, I don't know the solo mode all that well. That isn't part of the game that I handle from a design perspective. But I'm trying to think. I do have some strategy articles on strategy under Viticulture on our website for sure. Um, but I haven't done a strategy video, and I probably should. I, I'm having a sense of deja vu. I'm wondering if I have done a strategy video. But, you know, I should do that. If I haven't already, I should do a video about my strategy tips for each Stonemaier game. Like a few advanced strategy tips. I, have, I really am having a sense of deja vu here. Maybe I've done it. Um, Maybe I can do a video where I do like one starting tip and one advanced tip for our games, for Stonemaier game. I'm going to add that to my video list right now to think about. I really like that, Steve. Thank you for mentioning that idea to me. Ivan says that Living Force is on his wish list. He hasn't played it yet, but he says he loves the theme and the diversity of wind conditions and the cooperative element where you need to put out fires. Yeah, I do. I'm finding that I, I am enjoying games where one of the reasons that you need to pay attention to and interact with other players is not to get in their way or to conflict with them, but rather to work together with them to do something that the game wants you to do. I, I find that find that really, really interesting when games ask you to do that. Whether it's to combat something really bad that's going to happen or just something that maybe makes everything better for all players um, and working together to do that. It's a nice form of... Uh, of positive player interaction, or just almost neutral player interaction, uh, rather than uh, rather than direct conflict. Steven says he's looking forward to the Red Rising anniversary. It's one of our most played games in the last year. 17 plays. That's awesome, Steven. He says, I've also enjoyed the audiobooks for the first trilogy. Thanks for introducing me. I always love hearing that, Steven. Thank you for sharing that. I love hearing when people find out about the books from the game, and vice versa. I hear more about that version, but I haven't, I think that I'm sure that there are some people who found out about the game from the books or after getting into the books and maybe did, doing some Google searching about it. Gerald says, when Paolo, Paolo Morley, Morley got the rights back for Libertaria, did he also get the rights to the name, or did you have to buy the name off the previous publisher? Um, so Paolo had the, the rights like reverted to him before I even started to seek out Libertalia. And, 
the name actually was not trademarked. And so there were no rights for the name that we needed to acquire aside from us registering the trademark ourselves. So, um, yeah, it, it was kind of a, I guess I'll generalize your question. If the name had been trademarked, trademarked, would he have gotten the rights to them? I don't think so by default. I think the trademark still would have been held by Asmodee. Um, I think Asmodee was the company that, that had the rights before that. So, but I haven't had that happen yet. So I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Chad says that he's really enjoyed my 10 things I learned from series, especially my Clank episode. It really helped me design some crucial decisions. Help me with some crucial decisions in the game I'm designing. Thank you. I appreciate you hearing that or you saying that. And it's really helpful for me too to go do a deep dive into a game that I love and process why everything works in that game or sometimes a few things that don't work. But most things in Clank, I think, work really, really well. And that, that even just processing that and going through it layer by layer really helps me from a game design perspective as well. So I'm glad you're enjoying that. I'm going to keep doing that. Um, from time to time for games that I really, really love and that I know really, really well. Michael says that Bark Nova would be a retheme where you're all trying to build the best dog park and all the animals are breeds of dogs. That would be adorable. I'm hoping to get that experience maybe a little bit from the game Dog Park that's coming out later this year that I backed on Kickstarter. I have two dog themed games now for, for a cat person. Um, that's a little surprising. Dog Park and Bark Avenue. Yeah. Christopher says that he's looking forward to the Wingspan nesting box. Any updates on progress and timeline? Uh, just the timeline that's on our website right now on the news page. That's still the timeline for it. I think we're, we're still aiming for Q4 for pre-order and release. The exact timing of that will depend. I mean, if the, if the pre-order happens a little bit later, then the, then the retail release might happen in, um, in 2023, early 2023. But that is currently what we're projecting for the next Wingspan expansion and the nesting box the first print run of which will include the next Wingspan expansion inside the box. Yeah. Sean says, other than the games you played at Geekway, what new games would you recommend playing this weekend at BGG Spring? What new games would I recommend playing? Well, let me look at my list here of games that, uh, at least I'll, I'll call these new to me games, and I won't include the ones that I played at Geekway to the West, because that's what I think your question is asking. Um, I really enjoyed, if you're looking for something shorter and abstract, I really enjoyed Savannah Park. I haven't talked about that on my podcast yet, or my my, uh, my YouTube channel. Radlands, I really enjoyed too. If you're looking for a two player experience at the convention, um, and uh, what else have I enjoyed that's very new? The Adventures of Robin Hood. That's a fairly new release that I really enjoyed. Planet Unknown is also excellent. Enjoyed that. Uh, I was going to mention, oh, the, the two games that I didn't get to play at Geekway that you can play and tell me all about them are Dead Reckoning and. What was the other one? Dead Reckoning. Oh no, I'm blanking on the other game. I'm playing both of them in the very near future. I'm playing Dead Reckoning and another game. Um, but I'm blanking on it, so I don't know. But Dead Reckoning, that's a new one that I really am very curious about that I will get to play in the very near future, but I haven't played yet. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts if you've played that. Justin says he, he's wanting to go to Geekway next year. He wants it to be his first board game convention. Now, that's awesome. So you haven't attended a board game convention yet, Justin. I can see, uh, well, I, I, don't, I can't speak for you, but I'm an introvert. I was very hesitant to go to a board game convention for the first time, even especially one almost where you're just playing games for a few days. Because it was like, why don't I just invite friends over and play games? But I'm really glad that, that I have gotten into the Geekway experience now. Um, I enjoy playing games with a lot of people that I don't normally get to play games with. It's part of my job, but I also enjoy that just as a human being. And just seeing the energy in the room and the excitement over such a wide variety of games, well beyond games that I normally have access to, was really exciting. And also, the idea of just setting aside a big chunk of time to play games, um, like, you know, hours and hours over multiple days, feels very different than even a long game day of games. So. For those of you who haven't gone to a convention, I'd recommend, I mean, I'd always highly recommend Geekway, but I recommend starting with a small local convention. I wouldn't recommend starting with a giant convention like, like Gen Con. Um, those are kind of the, the big buzz, buzzworthy ones, Origins, Gen Con, you know, Essen. Those are more like fairs where you go around and see what's new, but there isn't as much game playing at them. It's not as intimate at all. Um, so I'd recommend finding a small local convention. We have a great list on our website of conventions that support play and win, that have play and win sections there. That's when you play, play a game, you check out a game from their play and win sec uh, library, you play it, and then you enter your name in, in essentially a big hat, and there's a potential for you to win that game at the end of the convention. 
Uh, I think it's a wonderful system. I have details about that on our website too, but those are the conventions that I recommend the most if you're trying one for the first time. But Justin, I would, I would love to see you at Geekway next year. I'd love to play a game with you there. Gerald says that Rado says that he loves Viticulture World, but he'd love it even more if he could go higher or lower, if he could increase or decrease the difficulty level of each world he enjoys like other cooperative games. Do you have any plans to develop and release that online for free, kind of like Tapestry Changes? That is actually built into the game already. Um, the default difficulty for each, um, for each continent is to play the cards in order. The difficulty emerges when you shuffle up the continent cards for each continent and play them in a random order. So I guess Rado didn't realize that that's already built into the game, but that, that is already built into the expansion itself. Yeah, we, we definitely planned ahead for that. I'm catching up on comments here. It looks like I'm nine minutes behind here. Chad says he's going on a classic book kick. He's going to start Frankenstein, Time Machine. Do I have a favorite classic book? Classic book, maybe not going back that far, but I love uh, the works of the author Roald Dahl. They do run a little bit uh, young now. If you're looking for uh, an older audience, an older you know, an adult book. Although he does have a few books that he wrote for adults, but yeah, I, I really love Roald Dahl. Um, so if, when I think classic, I would I would think about him. Uh, Steven says, Chrissy at the Dice Tower had a very positive review of Automa Factory's Terra Mystica solo mode. Are you proud to have discovered those guys? I don't know if I really discovered them, um, but I, I think maybe I, in a positive way that I enabled Morton um, to, to create Automa Factory. He was already creating Automa modes for fun, and I invited him to make one for Viticulture through the original Tuscany Kickstarter campaign. Um, the Automa mode is now built into Viticulture itself, but... Uh, but it's fun to, it, yeah, I, one of my favorite things about my job is creating opportunities for other people to, to thrive at what they're passionate about. And um, I have to give all credit to Morton for what he's created and his whole team now that he, that he has created. But I do get a, a little bit of, I don't know if pride is the right word, but it feels good to, to see uh, what he's done with, with solo modes for many Stillmire games and a few non-Stillmire games as well, like Terra Mystica and uh, Guy Project. Gerald says, on your web store, do U.S. customers from sale tax states get charged extra sales at checkout, or do they see a higher price before checkout, or do they all play the same price and you make it paying less profit on some U.S. customers? We do, we do charge tax where we have uh, tax nexus in the U.S., and they see it in their final cart. I think that's a little different than um, other countries where you're required to like build it into the price or have it visible up front. It isn't something that we're hiding, but it's just how Shopify works. It, for, for U.S. states, it just shows it on the back end at checkout. Um, yeah, so that's that that is how it works for U.S. customers. Jerry says, speaking of the new Castles of Burgundy campaign, it was revealed revealed that there will be a new vineyards expansion that reminds me of viticulture. In this case, it's growing grapes on quadruple layered boards. What is your line for deciding that something new is potentially inspired by your previous work or maybe borrowed too much from it? Um, I don't know if there really is a line at all. I, I was excited to see that. I thought of Viticulture thematically, but it looked very different than uh, than the gameplay of Viticulture. And really, thematically or mechanically, if anything that we make is uh, inspires someone else to create something cool, uh, I I love it. I think I think the only way that you can truly cross that line is if you do if you make it the exact same game, like plagiarize the content exactly as written, exactly as designed, and slap a different theme on it. Um, and I mean literally like the same thing. I, I think we see a lot of games where they might be inspired by a previous game, like uh, The Hunger, for example. I don't, I don't know if The Hunger was inspired by Clank, but if you talk about the game The Hunger, it's a deck building game where you're kind of racing out and then racing back in on a board. It sounds a little bit like Clank, right? But they actually play out very differently. Um, and so unless a game is an exact plagiarism of a previous game, but with a different theme on it, um, and I, again, I mean exact, then I don't think that you've crossed a line at all. Yeah. I, I think it's lovely that designers can, can inspire each other through their designs and the themes they choose and things like that. Justin says the Dead Reckoning is so good. Yeah, I'm really excited to play that. Molly says her three latest games are all ones that I've heard you recommend in the past. Dune Imperium, Arc Nova, and Terra Mystica. Yeah, three of my favorite favorites there, Molly. She says, thanks. Oh, oh, very nice comment. Thank you for steering me well, even with non-Stillmire Games titles. 
I'm glad to hear that, Molly. I, 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 I love hearing that when, when some of the games that I've talked about um, uh, are connected with other people as well. I do talk about a lot of games on my channel. In fact, I talk about every game that I play on the channel, whether or not I actually enjoy it. But those, you can probably tell from my various top five and top ten lists that I do genuinely enjoy those three games quite a bit. Patrick says, when I play games with groups, it seems that the games I bring always fall one player short of the number of people that I want to play with. More and more games max out at four or five players, and some games handle five or six, don't work as well or aren't as fun with fewer people. Are there any games that you like that can handle more players but are just as fun with two and three? You come to the right, the right place, Patrick, because all of Stillmeyer Games games are designed to play for at least uh, one to five players. Um, and I really, I really mean that. Like a lot of the playtesting we do is at those lower player counts, and we also design the mechanisms and playtest the games to work at those higher player counts. So most of the games in the Stillmeyer portfolio, I think, play really, really well at two or three players and also at four or five or even six players for many of them. And I, I genuinely mean that. I stand by it. I, I, I understand that some people may not agree with that, but I, they really were designed and playtested for that specific purpose. Yeah. Justin says that he first played and then won between two cities in a play and win. Oh, that's great. Talking about the play and win systems that some conventions used. Kevin says, uh, would you ever consider selling STL file upgrades for components on your website for your games? It would be great to have official files to 3D print and bling out our games. I think that's something that I'll probably lead, uh, leave for 3D specialists. There are lots of people who talk about the cool 3D printed things that they make for our various games. And sometimes they sell them, sometimes they give away for free. But uh, that is not something that I think we are experts at. That's we, we design components for the purpose of mass producing them, not for 3D printing. Um, and if we do invest heavily in something that we are mass producing, then we tend to keep it proprietary, especially for miniatures. Um, we don't we don't openly share the STL files for those. So, Kevin, I appreciate the question, but I think that's something best left to to third party accessory creators and enthusiast and like kind of three D printing enthusiasts. And if you're active in any of, any of our Facebook groups, you can see the awesome things that they create and that oftentimes they're willing to share. Yeah. scrolling through looking for questions here if I missed anything. Mario popped in to say, how many game expansions do you expect to release in 2022? How many do we expect to release? Well, what have we done so far? So, so far this year we've done, I'm talking about games and, and expansions in general. So far we released, um, is Libertalia, yeah, Libertalia. Viticulture World is coming up. So this is the first expansion. So Libertalia first game, Viticulture world uh first expansion and then i hope i'm not forgetting something here and then the next uh wingspan expansion so that's two expansions and one game let me see if i'm forgetting anything here is there anything really early in the year that i'm forgetting yeah those are those are the so i think it'll be three things th three pretty big things this year and we'll also have some new promos for rolling realms we also did the puzzles last month and i think we'll have neoprene mats for red rising and uh and tapestry later this year um as i say that I'm, i realize i need to check on the samples for one of those i haven't gotten the samples for the latest tapestry tapestry sample mat i'll make a note about that sorry i'm just rambling now about things um i think that's it. i feel like i'm forgetting something from earlier this year like really really early early this year but that that might have been libertalia yeah Uh, Renee says, regarding the comment of Rado, he already did that mix in the deck. Okay, good. So he's tried that, but he means like a controlled way of increasing difficulty, like in Pandemic. Um, yeah, we didn't we didn't do that. I, I, I you know, I, I that isn't uh, that is something that I typically do with cooperative games. And I think we are since we already included two levels of difficulty, and we included continents of scaling difficulty. I, th I think we have difficulty covered pretty well in Viticulture World. I appreciate Rado or anyone wanting more. That's also always cool. Maybe the designers will come up with something that they want. You could always play with one shorter year, try to do it in five years instead of six. Um, but given that we already have built-in continents with different, con uh, with different difficulty levels and within each continent you can place the cards in order or shuffle them and play them randomly for a higher difficulty and variability, I think that covers it pretty well for most of the people that are going to play Viticulture World, even dozens and dozens, dozens of times. Yeah. Um, 
that's my thinking right now, but who knows? Maybe Mahir and Francesca will want to add some other way to add even more difficulty later in the future. Yeah. I should be open to feedback about that, especially as I am working on a cooperative game. Yeah, it really isn't. It's interesting because I, I, I don't think often about scaling difficulty in cooperative games. I, I, uh, I, I, I guess I don't play many games that many times that I want to scale the difficulty. And I think many of the, the great cooperative games that I play, um, the difficulty... The difficulty is where I like it in like the default mode of it. Like I'm thinking of uh, uh, Mysterium Park. I just posted about that on on um, on Instagram today. I've never played Myster Mysterium Park and thought I wish this were more or less difficult. Like I think they hit the sweet spot for the difficulty. I think there's maybe a niche of players out there who want to play Mysterium Park all the time and want a way to increase the difficulty. But I think for them, it's probably pretty easy for them to do it. Like just give the uh, give the ghost fewer cards, um, that type of thing. It isn't that difficult to add. But yeah, it's important for me to keep that in mind that that there is a small percentage of gamers who like to vary that difficulty level quite a bit. Um, I do have a surprise for you later in the year that's somewhat related to this topic, but I don't want to spoil it yet. I'm kind of eager to talk about it, but don't want to spoil that yet. And it is not related to my big open world cooperative game, which is not ready for this year. Mario says that last night we played Libertalia and his six-year-old boy won the game against three experienced gamers with 94 points. That's awesome. Congratulations to your, is it your, your son, your, your son. Yeah, uh, that's really, really cool to hear. I'm glad that he was able to compete against everyone else. And 94 is a great score in Libertalia. Brian says, are you going to be at Gen Con? Uh, I will not be at Gen Con, no. And if you had to pick only one game to play at that con or otherwise, what would it be? I don't know. I, I've never actually played a lot of games at Gen Con. It's not really a convention where you often go to play a lot of games. It's more about, you know, g visiting the ex exhibitions, going to events where you learn games but don't actually play them. So if I went to a smaller convention like Geekway to the West and wanted to play games and I had to choose one, well, Geekway, the, the number one game that I really, really wanted to play was Wonderland's War, and I did get to play that. Um, the number one game that I didn't get to play that I was curious about was Dead Reckoning. Um, so those are two that I put out there that I... Uh, one of them I can definitely recommend because I have played it. One of them I'm eager to play but have not played yet. Both of them are long games to play at conventions, though. So I, Gen Con, again, I think the types of games often played at Gen Con are very, very short games. And so if you're looking for a newer short game to try to play, I'd recommend Savannah Park or Scout, which recently got nominated for the big German game award. Um, Scout is really, really good. Gerald says, that's interesting about the Viticulture World Shuffle deck. How do you make sure Africa is easier than the standard way? And then how would you make it more difficult? Remove cards and shuffle. In Pandemic, you add or remove Epidemic cards. How do you make sure Africa is easier than the standard way? And how would you make it more difficult? Um, that's getting into the nitty gritty of exactly how Africa plays, which I don't know off the top of my head. Um, Africa has, okay, Africa uses the cards as the resource. That's the mechanism in Africa. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think I've given the answer to that, Gerald. You, you shuffle the continent cards and play that way. And sometimes it'll end up being a little easier. Sometimes it'll be a little bit harder, but it's variable when you shuffle those cards. Yeah. I'd recommend experiment with, experiment, experimenting with this. No one has Viticulture World yet. So when you get it, if you are looking to play each continent multiple times and you're not getting the scale of difficulty as you're shuffling those cards, experiment with different, different things and talk about them in the Viticulture Facebook group. We welcome your feedback and ideas there. And that's a great place to have that type of conversation that's so specific to a certain continent. Renee says, have you tried mixing components of different continents for Viticulture World? Or is that something that was discarded in playtesting? Yeah, that definitely... That doesn't that that won't work the way it was designed. Like each continent was definitely designed as a, as its own specific thing, um, their own specific mini games, and it just uh, it doesn't work to combine them. Um, yeah, that I don't think we really considered that for a while. We wanted each continent to feel like its own area that you're playing within and somewhat against, but mo mostly within every time you play. Sean says, when will the pre-sale start for Viticulture World? Uh, we are looking at next Wednesday, around this time. Next Wednesday, June 1st, probably around 9.30, 10 o'clock a.m. in Central Time. Uh, that is the plan, unless 
something still, I think there's one last thing that we're waiting for, for uh, to arrive in Canada. And if that doesn't arrive, then we'll have to bump it back by a week until it does arrive. But everything is looking on course for next Wednesday. And just in case, go to our website and sign up for the pre-launch, sign up for a pre-launch notification. So we will let you know the minute that it goes live. So you can come check it out. I'm so excited to finally have it go live. Didn't mean to, dry, to drag on this long, um, but, uh, but freight shipping is crazy right now. Mario says, would you consider in the future to write a book about game design and running a game company? Well, I do have one book, Mario, and I'm actually doing a book club about it right now. This is a crowdfunder strategy guide, which is about running a game company and running Kickstarter projects and crowdfunding campaigns, that type of thing. And so this is a book that I have right now, and I'm doing a book club about it every other week. Um, you can check out the videos where you are right now on the Stone Mario Games Facebook page and on YouTube, and you can check out the book wherever you'd like. As for game design... I don't think I want to do a book about it, uh, but I do have a YouTube channel where I talk about my favorite game mechanisms in upwards of 600, maybe even 700 games at this point. So if you're interested in hearing me talk about game design in depth, check out my YouTube channel. Yeah. Chad says, what is your sweet spot for win-loss cooperatives? Do you feel you should lose more than you win or vice versa? Um, that's an interesting question, Chad. I don't, know, I don't know if I have an exact percentage. I think it depends on, um, depends on the game. Uh, I like to be close. I mean, I, I would say I like every game to be uh, close or dramatically uh, dramatically not close. I don't know. I can actually go either way there because I, I, I appreciate those experiences where everything goes dramatically poorly or dramatically well and you win or lose based on that. But, uh, but I generally, I think I, I like it to be pretty close where it comes down to the end, comes down to the why and gets pretty close. There are two huge different categories of cooperative games. I talk about this on my game design channel. There is the type where you're playing against the game. It is a struggle against an antagonistic game that is competing against you. Pandemic is, is an example of that. A lot of a dungeon crawl games. Uh, Gloomhaven is an example of that. You have this antagonist, antagonistic force and you are fighting against it. Uh, to win or lose. And there's also the style that I prefer, which is that you are solving a puzzle together with other players. Uh, Mysterium Park is one of those. The Mind is one of those. Um, Hanabi is one of those. Games where you have a puzzle to solve with other players, usually with limited communication, like the crew, for example, and you're trying to solve that puzzle together. And that is definitely my preferred style. I love working together with other players to solve a puzzle. Viticulture World is that style of game too. Not with much limited communication, but it is a puzzle that you're solving together with other players. And um, uh, with that, with I'm trying to think with either style, with the against the game struggle i if we're gonna lose i'd rather lose quickly um with the puzzle that you're solving together with other players in fact i might even say that for both uh but i, I think with the puzzle against other players i do like it to be really really close um if possible to have that tension even in your last few decision points jerry says with scotland yard aging well in my collection as it does have i tried other deduction games like white chapel or whitehall um, any recent ones you would recommend that complement Scotland Yard? I have played a few different hidden movement games over my years, trying to find to capture that Scotland Yard magic. I have never found a hidden movement game uh, that is as good as Scotland Yard, though. I've played I played Whitechapel. I haven't played Whitehall. I have played um, what is the one from Plaid Hat Games? That's uh, that's very good. All these games are very good hidden movement games. I played most recently Mind Management. I appreciate the designs for all these games, but I love the simplicity and elegance of Scotland Yard. And so I keep coming back to that one more than any of the other ones. Yeah. Nancy Jane says, have I played First Rat? I've not played First Rat, no. What is that one about? I haven't actually heard of that one. Patrick says, have I ever tried a legacy game? Have I ever thought about creating one? Um, I've tried, I've played many, many legacy games. Yeah, I have a list on my YouTube channel about my favorite campaign slash legacy games. And I designed a legacy game called Charterstone. Um, that is available on our web store right now. If you want to come check out what a Jamie Stegmeier legacy game looks like. Um, yeah, I, it's probably the only legacy game I ever designed. It's very, very difficult to design a legacy game. But, uh, but yeah, I have designed one. Nicola says, on the topic of freight shipping, I heard last year a container could cost anywhere around $27,000 to ship. Is, that, is it still that high or have the prices come down at all? The peak of pricing was in like January. Um, and then it was around 27,000. In fact, I think we paid around $33,000 for some containers uh, coming from from, uh, from China to the US. 
More recently, the prices have gone down a little bit, but they're still around twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars. And this is compared to the pre-pandemic rates that were around three to five thousand dollars. So still significantly higher container cost than they were before the pandemic. But uh, but I would say over the last eight months, the prices have not varied all that much. So. Uh, no creators should really be surprised by price by freight shipping being in the twenty to thirty thousand dollar range if they have run a project over the last eight months or are planning to ship anything over the last eight months. And I think that will continue, unfortunately, for the near future. Maybe it'll eventually go down to fifteen thousand, ten thousand, but I don't know if it's ever going to go back down to five thousand. Unfortunately. I think that gets us to the end of the questions today. We've talked about the Red Rising anniversary coming up this weekend. Play Red Rising this weekend and share your experiences. Share your final hand. I'm going to share my final hand if I get to play it as well. You can go to our website now on Viticulture World, the Viticulture World page, and sign up for a, a, a notification to be notified next Wednesday, hopefully, when we go live with a pre-order. And you can also make your own custom wine label there. And uh, what else did I talk about? Uh, book Club, and it will be next week, not this week. And I think... Those are the main topics I talk about. And I'm, running, I'm working on a play test today, but I didn't go to the details of what that is. Chad says that he recommends Black Sonata, and he recommends that. Um, and Nancy Jane says the, the first rat game. It's about rats living in a junkyard building a spaceship to go to the moon that has cheese. You have a crew of rats. That sounds adorable and awesome, and I need to try that game. Uh, thank you for recommending that, Nancy Jane. I haven't, I haven't heard of that one before, but I'll check out First Rat in the near future. I'm going to go have some lunch. My stomach is grumbling. i got to eat those, pretz those Pringles that I was craving earlier. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll be back to see you again next Wednesday for, hopefully, almost certainly, the Viticulture World and Wine Crate pre-order. I'll see you then. Bye.